George McShann, Javier De Leon, and Dr. Bobby Muniz. Getting ready for kickoff here. Looks like the Chargers will be kicking off to the Harlingen South Hawks. Hawks in green, and the Chargers in white. Jimmy Morton, Jonathan, will have a chance to come out. The youngster quarterback, Junior, uh, has struggled a little bit this season. Uh, but as I look at him, I will say he has some very natural gift in this. So see what he's going to do here in this first drive. Yeah, if you watch him in warm-ups, you watch him in other games, you see that there is some talent there. He just hasn't refined it quite yet, or we haven't seen it yet in a game. So we have to see if he's able to have his coming out party tonight. And here we go. The kid returns back to the 20, and he'll be met there about the 23-yard line. Uh, and the Harlan South Hawks will start about the 23. And going back to Jim Warden, uh, that junior last year missed all year with uh, a, a broken uh, foot uh, injury and uh, came back this year as a junior. And uh, like we said, just a very natural talent. So it looks uh, looking to put it all together, uh, especially here for district play. Yeah, there's a lot of high expectations for him this season. Everyone is expecting him to lead this offense. And so we just have to see if he's able to start that tonight. And the Harlan and South Hawks will take the ball. They do mark it at the 23-yard line. They will be going south. No wind here on the field tonight, so talk about the passing game. Should be no problem. No rain around yet. Here we go. Jimmy Morton in the shotgun formation. Hands it off to his running back. Actually ends up keeping it. It's a fake to Steven Rodriguez, and he's going to be tackled for a short loss. Yeah, very short loss as he was met by three defenders right away. He was reading it in the hole. I think he may have taken a little tongue to a little long to make a decision as, as the veteran memorial defense seemed very well prepared for them on that one, Aaron. Definitely. Just a little bit of, a, uh, of almost an option there. Just uh, chose to ha uh, hand it off and keep it. He chose to go with the keeper. Not much there on the run for the quarterback. So second down, and they're going to mark him just a short little loss. So it'll be second and ten here uh, for the Hawk defense. They're going to go four wide receivers this time, spreading it out. Send a receiver in motion. Jay Morton rolls to his left, looking to pass to his slot. Connects to number 11, past the first down marker to the 45. The 50 will go out. Number 11, Darren Pettis on a big catch and run. And here we see on this play, the motion is what really sets up this play right here as they do. Just a quick rollout, but as the receiver was coming in motion, the defender was slow playing it a little bit in a man-to-man -man coverage. And so when the receiver just took off to the left sideline right away, easy pitch right there right to the receiver and he's able to make a big play afterwards and almost gets it past the 50 yard line big catch and run by Darren Bettis number 11 for the Hawks will put the ball at the 50 yard line the Hawks sign up again with three wide receivers in the shotgun formation Jimmy Morton takes a snap looking downfield wants to pass this pressure comes lets it fly and a few feet over his intended receiver and he's hit hard after the throw he is hit hard he does stick there he does make the throw Unfortunately, it seemed like him and the receiver were a little bit, uh, they weren't in the right chemistry. It looked like Morton wanted to throw it deep, and the receiver kind of cut the rod off a little bit. But uh, it could have been a big play, just yeah. wasn't quite there. And Ale Garza was number 25, and we have seen Ale Garza be able to turn the burners on and uh, run past some defenders this season already. And he did have about two steps on those defenders, so if that ball was connected with him, he would have gone to the house. Here we go, pistol formation this time, switches back over to shotgun. He has Steven Rodriguez in the backfield. Four wide receivers stacked. Two and two. Waiting the snap. And we're going to have a, a... Looks like it's going to be a delay of game, Jonathan. Didn't get the snap off in time. Yeah, it looks like they were taking their time. They had more than moved over the running back to the opposite side. I'm not sure. And we didn't get to see really the, what the play developed. We did see a guard pull. So I'm not sure if maybe the, the runner wasn't aligned in the right spot in order to run the right play. Yeah, interesting formation there. Uh, for you to be able to go check this out again, this is live audio only. Live audio only during the football game as per UIL rules. So if you're listening right now at valleycentral.com, you will only have the audio. And roughly about an hour to two hours after the game, the video will be uploaded. Uh, that is a UIL rule. So uh, here we go, live audio, second and 15 for the Hawks. And we're going to have a timeout. Looks like it will be charged to the Hawks. So uh, after that big pass, you would expect that momentum to continue. It's just kind of stopped, you know, a penalty and now timeout. Yeah, it looks like the, like you said, penalty timeout. It looks like there might have been a little confusion. I'm not sure why coach called a timeout here. Aaron, I'm watching the defense, and it seems like the safety is cheating up a lot. So I think Morton's going to have some opportunities to go over the top and test the defense and they're in the deep coverage 
we, we said he wasn't able to connect earlier. Maybe they're thinking he won't be able to connect throughout the night. That's true, and that, that's a good observation, something to definitely watch. And like we mentioned earlier, I was just watching him in warm-ups, and, uh, you know, in warm-ups without any pressure. He, I mean, he, he's on. I mean, he can, he can throw that ball in there, really nice uh, throwing motion, great spiral, but it looks like under pressure he's getting a little bit shaky. So he'll, he will have some opportunities like Jonathan is saying. Here we go, second and 15 now. He's under center this time. Don't see him do that too much. He fakes left, rolls right, passes right, caught. Big hit by the receiver. Uh, he'll get about 10 or 11-yard gain. That's number five, Royal Berlanga. Yeah, here we see it's a simple play-action pass. He rolls out, easy throw. He connects it with it on the run. Receiver catches it, turns. He's met quickly by a defender, but he lowers his head, and it seemed like the offensive player laid the hit there on that one. Uh, but he is tackled just short of the first down. So we'll see a third and two on this upcoming play. Yeah, that number five, Royal Berlanga. I mean, he, he, looks, he doesn't look like a wide receiver. He looks like a fullback out there. And he just lowered his head, went right over the defender. So like Jonathan said, really good game. He's going to put him re uh, really close, about two yards from that first down marker. And it looks like we're going to have a second timeout on the Hawks here, Jonathan. Two timeouts within the course of about 45 seconds. Yeah, two timeouts now. I'm not sure if maybe Coach really wants to establish – getting into good field position or, or maybe take an early lead by making sure that he scores some points in the beginning of the game. We said before that they haven't established a really great passing right. game, so maybe he wants to be sure that they're able to score early and they're not having to play catch-up throughout the rest of the game. Yeah, that's a good point there. And, you know, one of the things I noticed here in the huddle is that they immediately made two different personnel changes. And so, you know, it could be that, that they're a little bit confused right now of what personnel package is supposed to be on the field for what they're trying to do. Uh, and so two timeouts burned very quickly here. We're still at over 10 minutes left in the first quarter. South Hawks have used up two of their timeouts. So they'll go back to work here. Third and two, ball in the 42 of the Chargers. Now we're going to go I formation. One receiver only. So different look here for the Hawks. Sends the receiver in motion. Number one crossing the field. We'll hand off to his fullback. His fullback, number 21, Javier Olvera. No gain. No gain right there. It looked like in the first play that they had put out on the field, they had a shotgun spread out option. Then it looked like Coach made some substitutions, brought in the big boys. He does a handoff to the fullback. A lot of times when you hand off to the fullback, you're quick hitting, and you're often able to get there before any of the penetration, any of the linebackers are able to see it. But he is not, as he's quickly met by the defender coming free. And they will go for the first, uh, to, for, on fourth down, they're going to go for the first down. Here we go. Two running backs in the backfield, two wide receivers for Morton. He's going to keep this one, runs right up the middle, pushing forward, surging, and he will have enough for the first down. Big run there by Jimmy Morton. Yeah, right there, they had this kind of a stack formation on the right side. Both runners act as fullback as they had one fullback up forward, running back on the side of Morton. Uh, but as the ball is being snapped, by the time he gets it, he already has two yep. blockers up ahead. All he does is follow, and he gets the short yardage to get the first down. And he had a full head of steam also on that one. And so uh, Jim Morton, one of, the, one of the bigger kids on the field, both offense and defense here. Here we go. Three wide receivers uh, trips left. He sends one of them in motion right. And he's going to hand it off to Rodriguez. Rodriguez in, cuts inside. He's going to get a few yards, maybe about five or six on the play. Pushes forward for maybe one or two more. Yeah, very interesting. We've seen a lot of tight formations for South on this drive. We see two guys, two of their offensive line pulling. And then he just follows his blockers, makes a cut, and gets himself some good yards on the run play. Looks like it'll be second and four. Tough running there by number four, Steven Rodriguez. So they will mark it a second and four. Eight and a half minutes left to go in the first quarter. Again, thank you for listening live audio right now at valleycentral.com. Uh, again, we will be bringing you a live audio feed as per UIL rules. Here we go. Four wide receivers for Morton. He's looking to pass to his running back in the flat. Rodriguez at the 35, the 30, the 25. Cutting inside to the 20. Down to the 15. Finally will be pushed out of bounds. Really nice play there. Good run by Rodriguez. Really nice play there by the receiver. Rodriguez looks like he might have had an opportunity to take it around the edge, but number 26 for the veterans' defense is able to get there and make the stop. It looked like he didn't have the angle, but he does a good job of blocking him, taking the angle eventually, and his teammates are able to recover and get there to stop the touchdown. But they are in the red zone now. That's right. They sure are. 
First and 10 on the 17-yard line. They are in that road zone. Morton goes under center again. One running back in the backfield. That is Rodriguez. And he will get the handoff. Up the middle has a couple blockers. And he'll fall forward again of about three, maybe four yards. Yeah, right there we see the defense. When, they are, when the South is lining up in their big packages, the defense, they are all stacked on the inside trying to make sure they stop this run game for the Hartman South Hawks. They're really challenging the run game, as you'll see that it, you couldn't see a safety out there because the safeties were lined up parallel with the linebackers. A little bit of different offensive scheme there for the Hawks. We haven't seen that the first couple games of the season. Now they go back to what they're used to, the, that spread formation, four wide receivers, receiver in motion now. He's going to roll right, hooks up to number one again at the five, and he will get in the end zone, goes Bobby Castro. Barring a flag, that will be a touchdown Hawks. Good design by the Harlingen South Hawks. As he rolls across, you see the safety trailing with him, so you know it's man-to-man -man coverage. You also see the corner on the right side who is guarding the initial wide receiver on the right. He's chasing the receiver with his back to the ball, so as soon as he makes the catch, he has an open run all the way down into the end zone before anyone was able to make a touch on him. Great play there. Great design there from that connection uh, between Jimmy Morton, number seven, and Bobby Castro, number one. For the first score, 6.57 left to go in this first quarter. It is 6-0. Waiting for the extra point snap is good. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So it will be 7-0. The Hawks take lead over the Chargers here early halfway through the first quarter. So, hey, you know what? The, the Hawks were not able to score last week. The week before that had a hard time scoring as well. And so to be able to come out on the first drive, put a drive together like that, that's got to do something uh, for your team right there. Yeah, it seems like the scheme of Harlington South, the coaches have recognized something beforehand. They noticed that man-to-man -man coverage, when the receiver's coming across, the safety's covering them. So it looks like veterans are the veteran memorial team is going to have to make an adjustment because we saw that play hit big earlier at about the – 30-yard line taking him up to the 50 and now we see it for another about 20 yards for the touchdown right there on that one except left side and now right side well you know you have to wonder I mean you know we talk about this all the time you know in, in uh, pre-district play right and and how much do you really want to show of your offense you know we, we see the Hawks come out here in some tight formations right they're running eye formation they're running that single uh, running back there with, with with a tight end double tight end sets we didn't see that in the first couple of games so that's a new wrinkle that they're bringing now in district play. You want to bring out the playbook. Yep, you said it right there. They did test them with a few different formations. They were able to get some positive yards in the run game using a lot tighter and bigger formations. Uh, but the, really the big play they hit was that spread formation that we've seen them and been used to. And now on the kickoff by the Hawks. And the re return is going to be number seven for the Chargers. That's Jeremiah Myers. And uh, he'll get a short return. He's going to bring it out to about the 22-yard line. And now we get to see the Chargers go to work. We know that they uh, blanked uh, Edinburgh Bobcats 41-0 uh, last week. So uh, we know they can put some points on the board. Uh, and uh, we're going to get a first look at their offense here just in a few short seconds. Yeah, 41 points last week. You know the offense is going to come out. They're going to feel confident. Right. They just got scored on. I'm sure those big boys up front and all the skills players are saying, we need to answer back now. And so let's see what they come out with. And you talk about big boys, and they have some big boys on the offensive line. Here we go. Spread formation. Also, quarterback for Veterans Memorial. It's going to hand it off to number 28 running back around the outside. Has some space to run to the 40. All the way to the 45 goes number 28. That is Carlos Garzón, a big run on the outside. Yes, I think right there we see the quarterback. He sits on the read for a long time, and by the time he lets go of the ball, it looked like the South defenders, they couldn't tell who to guard, and with the momentum that the running, running back had, he was able to get around the edge on all of them and make the first down. Yeah, Carlos Garza has some wheels there, folks. He was able to just get on that edge, and, and, you know, if it wasn't for that last defender there, he would have been gone. So here we go. Now we have the quarterback, Marcus Castillo, number five. Shotgun formation. We'll hand it off again. No, he kept it this time. Snuck it back. Oh, and he gets some tough yards moving forward. He was almost tackled for a loss and ends up with a gain of about four yards. Well, we said that Morton was a big player out there on offense. Well, this quarterback... Yep. 
We can't tell how big he is because he's squatting down so deep as he gets the ball. But that time we see him break a tackle. And as he's tumbling over, he gets hit by two defenders and still knocks them back. He knocked them backwards uh, when they try to tackle him. So a uh, big run there by number five, Marcus Castillo. Second and six. Castillo. And he squats way down like a catcher to get this snap. All right, here we go. Hands off to his running back. New running back, number 11 for the Chargers. A gain of a couple yards for Derek Rodriguez. Yeah, right there we see number 34 of Harlingen South. He gets some quick penetration. That's Jared Sheneman. Uh, but he is not able to make the tackle. And then our, the runner for the Chargers is able to get the yards to make it a third and short. It was almost a third and long. So we're going to, think, see the first pass play of the, for veteran tonight. And here we go, Castillo. Uh, Marcus Castillo, number five, will take the snap. And he'll hand it off to his running back who had a big game the first time. Here we go, 40, the 35, he's broke one. 30, 25, 20, 15. He's going to go all the way. No flag on the field. This will be a touchdown Chargers on a huge run by number 28, Carlos Garza. What a nice play by Garza right there. We see his burst coming out. He does have some good top end speed, but he's able to get there really quickly as the read is taking a little bit some time to let go of it. But once he lets go, Garza takes off and then he makes a beautiful cut. He only really had one defender to beat because of his speed. No one was going to be able to gather around him. He makes the cut, and you don't even see any of his momentum slow him down at all. He just takes it to the house. Rudy Bejarano now to kick the extra point for the Chargers, and the kick is up, and it will be good. So 7-7 ball game now with five minutes left to go in the first quarter. Let's go back to the speed of number 28, Carlos Garza. Now, watching him on that replay, we'll encourage you to go back and watch the replay, watch the whole play uh, of the game about an hour to two after the game ends here. But, you know, it's deceptive speed, Jonathan, because I'm watching him, and it doesn't look like his, his legs are moving that fast, but he's just gaining ground on all the defenders. It's a long stride. He gets around that corner, and once he turns it on, it just goes. I mean, that's some, that's some good-looking speed there um, from the running back for the Chargers, number 28, Carlos Garza. And it is a little bit of an interesting tweak of the way they're running this read offense. As we see, normally the read is that the running back is taking it up the middle and the quarterback reads and goes out. The play that we saw hit twice for Brownsville veterans right now was that they were reading with the running back going mm -hmm. outside on the edge. And each time he decided to give it, but the quarterback would have pulled and attacked the middle. That's right. So a little bit different of a tweak, but very effective for the veterans' chargers on that drive. And I think we know why they choose to do it that way, because number five, Marcus Castillo, looks like he's a bulldog up the middle if he takes it. And number 28, Garza, uh, can get around the corner there and turn the Jets on. So here we go. The Hawks now back to receive a kickoff. And it's going to be received at the five, four-yard line, out to the 15 now to the 25 and out to the 26 with a spinning tackle. And that looks like that was number 11, uh, Darren Pettis, uh, for the Hawks. Yeah, going back to that last, those plays on offense, I really haven't seen anyone use that except for Cam Newton on his way to the Heisman Trophy when he was in college a few years ago. Uh, but very interesting to see that this high school team has shown to be really effective, probably because we said earlier the quarterback runs – hard inside the way you don't see very many quarterbacks do it. So I have not seen them throw a pass, so they didn't have to on that series. Now the Hawks are back. Here we go. Pistol formation for Jimmy Morton. Rodriguez is running back. Shifts him to the side now. Four wide receivers. They're running the stack. Of course, number one here is going to drop back. Get this. Trying to shake a defender. Not going to do that. Uh, Bobby Castro on the reception. Gain of about three yards. Yeah, here we see each receiver on each side is stacked. And so it looks like Brownsville veterans, they have one interior defender lined up quite a ways off the ball. And then the outside is very much off the ball. So they just quickly hit the side, make the block on the interior defender. But Brownsville veterans, number 26 on the defense, he does a great job of coming up and stopping the play so it stays a short game. Second and seven now. And looks like the quarterback, Jimmy Morton, is calling timeout. He's calling timeout with the officials. It took him a few seconds to finally get that. So that's the third timeout. They have no more timeouts left. And we're still at 4 minutes, 13 seconds left to go in the first quarter. So, you know, just a little interesting fact here in that the first two series, they've gone to the timeout obviously three times, right? And it just seems like they're getting set and there's some confusion here. They're, they Maybe they don't have the right personnel. Maybe, uh, you know, they don't like what they see on defense. But that's it. There's no more timeouts for the rest of the first half. 
you know, as we go out there, we, we did see that it was rewarded. They gave up two timeouts right. in the first drive, but it was rewarded. They did get the touchdown, uh, but I'd, I'd hate to see a team, you know, yeah. they're out of timeouts, so they could have the potential of getting the ball late in the first half and then not be able to do anything because of the lack of timeouts. I'm wondering how much of this may be, maybe they did throw in some new plays um, here for district play, and, and maybe they're still getting used to that offense. You know, we have a, a younger quarterback, of Junior Morton, and uh, it could be that they just don't have a, a, a solid, firm uh, hold on this new uh, play playbook that they're pulling out. So we'll see what's, what's going to end up happening. But again, they burn their, their third and final timeout. The Chargers still have all three. Here we go. Second and seven. Back to football. Sends a man in motion. Hands it off to Rodriguez. Rodriguez trying to break a tackle, spin tackle, and he'll come down about four yards short of the first down marker. He has a very narrow hole, but he is able to get between that run play, between the tackles. He does get between the hole. Uh, quickly met by a defender, but he does a good job of falling forward as the defender's peeling off a block, so the defender's not able to meet him with momentum, and he just takes him with him for, along for a short ride, making it a third and a manageable, thir or a manageable third down. Third and three now for the Hawks. 3.40 left to go in the first quarter. 7-7 seven to seven tie ball game here at Bogus Stadium. Jimmy Morton sends a man in motion. That's number one, Bobby Castro. He's looking to throw to number one. He connects with Castro. Castro slips a tackle. He's past the first down marker by about two yards. That should be a first down Hawks. This time the safety for veterans does play it much more aggressively. We, earlier we saw when he's coming in motion, he was just allowing the receiver to make the easy first down this time he cuts him off but great cut by number one of the Harlingen South Car Hawks as Bobby Castro gets the first down he cuts back in and just makes enough to get the first down that's the same play they ran to get the touchdown earlier uh, and so they're going back to that play here we go those those receivers are stacked again on the outside one behind the other on um, both ends of the field here. Morton goes to pass again to the back receiver, catches it, runs forward, gain of seven, eight, almost nine yards there before he's pushed out of bounds, and that's going to be number 25 on the reception, Ali Garza. Again, as I pointed out earlier, they have the two stack on each side, and the way Veterans is playing it, they are watching, the, the outside linebacker is watching the interior rece the receiver, but the receiver just goes and makes the easy block there, and then the, the deep defender has to come up that time, the defender doesn't come up hard, and the Hawks get very good yardage on that as it'll be second and three. Jimmy Morton now I formation, going back to that tight formation. Sends again, Castro in motion, number one. He likes that quick pass to that motion man. He does hand it off to his fullback. His fullback gets upfield to the 40 to 35. Goes number 21, Javier Olvera. And uh, that quick hit, hand off to the fullback, gains some good yardage there, first down. Hey, you don't usually see a quick hit to the fullback goal on the edge but that time some great blocking at the point of attack by the left side the offensive line and it looked like they had a tight end there they all hold their blocks they actually put, drive the pile about two three yards and so very easy run for the fullback and then once he got on the edge he looked like he had the speed of a running back yeah he looked really good there right off the edge again number 21 javier olvera so first and 10 now on the 36 yard line of the chargers so back in charger territory the Hawks will line up. Jimmy Morton will fake the handoff. Rolls right. Looking downfield. Wants to pass downfield. Has number five open. Caught at the 20. Down to the 16-yard line goes Royel Berlanga for yet another catch. And that will be a big-time first down for the Hawks. Very similar play that we saw Berlanga make earlier as Morton connect with him again. He takes it up the edge. The first time we said he, he lowered his head and he, he looked like he was the one that thumped the defense. Here we see him catch it. He turns up, and what do we see him do again? Lowers he head. lowers his head. He's not going to be brought down going backwards. He's going to fall forward every time he touches the ball. And Bedlanga is coming out of that tight end position there. So he lines up at tight end, and uh, he, he's, a, he's a bruiser. So big first down now on the 17-yard line inside that red zone for the Hawks. Here we go. Pitch to Rodriguez. Rodriguez to the 10. Space to run. Oh, and he's stuck at the 5, but he still spins out. Uh, and that's going to be another first down for the Hawks. Very interesting. We see after the pitch, Morton goes up. He almost acted as a lead blocker. He looks like he really wants to make plays here. As he, You see him, he makes the pitch. He goes up. He doesn't really block anyone, but he does <laughs> make people go around him a little bit. Yeah, he, he chipped the linebacker. He <laughs> chipped him there. That was, that was a good little chip there by the quarterback turned blocker. Hey, first down and five now uh, on the five-yard line. So really it's a, it's a first and goal. 
Um, and the Hawks will, were looking to score here with a minute and 22 seconds left to go. It's 7-7. And so uh, Morton and the Hawks uh, looking to make something happen out of this good series for them. Here we go. Morton's going to keep it left side. Has space to run. Almost untouched to the very end. That will be a touchdown, Hawks, on the run. The keeper by Jimmy Morton. Yeah, we see him. It, it looked like he was starting to fake, but I think he just right. saw how open it wow. was on the left side, and he just took off. We know he's athletic. He can make plays like that against this veterans defense it looks like veteran has played man to man the entire game on the edge on these receivers so the safety's looking at his receiver he's not looking he was the only one that was really going to be able to help but again he's playing man to man so his eyes are not in the backfield they are strictly on his receiver more makes the easy play to the left side scoring the touchdown i mean it was a it was a massive gap there to his left i mean he saw that wide open took it here we go kick is up Waiting for the official, and it is good. So 14-7 now. Uh, again, after that quarterback keeper by Morton, like you said, you know, maybe it was designed to be a pass, or, uh, but, you know, he's seen that huge gap there. He just he just took off and really was untouched. He was really tackled right at the goal line. It really made no difference at that point. So, you know, talked about Jay Morton at the very beginning of this game, saying, you know, uh, I just natural ability, raw talent, and it looks like he's been able to put it together here tonight. Yeah, outside of the one incompletion that he right. threw, trying to go deep, He's had a really great game, both in the passing and in the run game. And we even saw him do a little chip block That's on right. that drive. That's right. That's right. And so, hey, you know what? This, this young quarterback, Jamie Morton, uh, has, has had a good showing here tonight. So, let's talk about the Chargers now. Last series, they're unstoppable. Going back to number 28, Carlos Garza. Um, that, he's going to be a handful tonight for the Hawk defense. Yeah, we saw that the Chargers, they made a, a quick adjustment. They they. They still got allowed the Hawks to get the first down with that same play, but they didn't allow it to break big. We got to see if the South Hawks are, have been able to make the adjustment as we saw him run right on a read play going to the outside each time, breaking for a big first down and then the big touchdown. So the Chargers will go to work here waiting this uh, kickoff, and it will be returned. Oh, it's uh, fumbled on the return, but he picks it up out to the 10 now, number 7. Out to the 15, 18, 20-yard line. Falls forward to the 22, goes number 7, Jeremiah Myers. So uh, the Chargers will take over on the 22-yard line with 1 minute, 3 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Yeah, Myers, he bobbles it, so it, it allowed South's uh, kickoff team to get down the field. It looked like he had a chance of breaking something for a, a really good play, but it does. the hole does quickly close down on him. And he is tackled as he attacks it down the middle, hitting one of his players first. But there were several South defenders there to make the stop. So here we go. Number five, Marcus Castillo, uh, the quarterback in that shotgun formation, has a couple of dangerous running backs with him in that backfield. Three receivers uh, spread out as well. He ends it off to number seven on that, out, on that replay to the outside again. This time it goes to number seven, Jeremiah Myers, who just returned that uh, kickoff, and it'll be no gain. Yeah, right there we see number 34, Jared Shenneman, he has to come up and guard the read play. He attacks it aggressively going after the runner. I think he saw the in the first drive the runner was getting I, the ball I, afterwards, and so he decided that we're not going to allow the runner to make any big plays anymore. Good play there by the linebacker, number 34. Here we go, second down, 10 still. 32 seconds left to go in this first quarter. Handoff again to Myers. No, it's a keeper. Uh, Ends up keeping that one is a Castillo, number five. Uh, and, you know, he does that so well. He fools me almost every single time. It looks like he gives the running back, and he keeps it. That time he falls forward for, again, about three yards, maybe Well, four. he really sits and waits for Eric. Yeah, he, does he does not just make the quick, easy read. He's really taking his time. You know, he, I think that's a result of he really trusts his offensive line, that these defenders aren't just going to shoot right. right up at him. He's, he's able to just sit and read it along. And we saw it again as the quarterback's the one taking it down the middle. And he's a good runner. And you know what? That was actually a gain of seven yards, a deceptive seven yards on that uh, play. So that's going to bring up a third down and three. The quarter does come to an end now here at Bogus Stadium. The score is 14-7. Again, you're listening to live audio only uh, right now at valleycentral.com. Uh, again, we just want to thank uh, the KHGN's team here today, including Shane Schubart, Maritza Gallaga, Adriana Dominguez, Roland Anzaldua, Iris Montemayor, Joe Medrano, Sam Vargas, Javier Araiza, Pat Guajardo, and the KHGN Co-Ops bringing this awesome game, this beautiful night here in Harlingen, Jonathan. Uh, you know, rain had been forecasting for the past couple days. We don't see it tonight. We've got a beautiful night for football. It's a beautiful night for football, and we've seen both these offenses really run pretty beautifully as we really haven't seen a single negative play throughout the night. Uh, we've just seen these offenses rolling. Of course, there's only been 
uh, three and a half possessions, but uh, so far so good for each of the offenses, which spells to be bad news for the defenses so right. far tonight. And it will be a game of attrition, right? Because uh, we talked about this in pregame a little bit, how the Hawks and South Hawks are not very deep. Um, as a matter of fact, a couple of their key players go both ways. So this will be a, a, a game to see who will outlast the other, perhaps. Here we go. Castillo in the shotgun formation. Third and three. Big third down here for the Chargers. Hands it off, and he's stuffed in the backfield. Falls forward, but he will not have enough for the first down. This will bring up a fourth down for the Chargers. First fourth down of the game. First fourth down, it could be the first drive that does not result in a touchdown. But we got to see, as it is a very close uh, fourth down. It looks like the coach is thinking about it, but he does send a whole other group of players out, so it does look like we will see our first punt of the game. And we will get the first punt, looks like. And it looks like the coach is calling for timeout, so we'll have our first timeout also from the Chargers uh, here just to, to kick off the, the second quarter uh, here at Bogus Stadium. So we talked about attrition. We talked about you know how defense has their hands full. Um, Harlan South could come up with a huge stop right here to start the second quarter. And if that offense can continue rolling the way that they have been, this could be some, some good things uh, for Harlan South here in the next uh, few minutes of this second quarter. I think it'll be really interesting to see what they come out with. Will they punt it? Because right. it's a very, very short fourth down play. You know, I know it's early in the game, but you've got to feel confident in your offensive line as they are some big boys. And they, we really have not seen any negative plays so far. Well, and it does look like the offense has come out. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say, too. And, and Castillo's come back. So he, he's coming back to the quarter, quarterback shotgun formation. So they're going for this. It's a fourth and a very short, maybe one or two foot here. It's less than a yard. He shifts two men in motion here, sets them again. Castillo in that shotgun now. He's going to run it himself. Surges forward. He's hit really close to the line of scrimmage. I think there's going to be a measurement. Jonathan. Yeah, I think it'll definitely be measured as we hit, we see him. He attacks the middle right there. The defensive lineman for Harlan South, they shoot uh, or and bear crawl underneath the legs of the offense. He's quickly met by linebacker number 34, Shineman. But it looks like they did yep. give him the first down after all. Yeah, I think the forward progress had him moving ahead of, of that first down marker uh, before he was hit then by number eight, James Scottipio. So uh, just barely does he get that first down. Gutsy move there uh, by the coach from uh, or the Chargers over there. Uh, and so like you said, it's early in the game. You called it. They came out, got the first down. Here we go. Spread formation now. Four wide receivers. And he's going to hand it off. Here, here he is, number 28. Dangerous running back now to the 40, to the 45, 50. Uh, goes number 28, Carlos Garza. That guy, every time he touches the ball, you have to watch out for a big game. Yeah, this time we hadn't seen him break any tackles because of his shiftiness right. and speed, but this time we see him get through one arm tackle, then another arm tackle, and then his speed gives him the big first down. And not only that, but then he lowers his shoulder level again at the very end and just runs over that defense. So seeing a lot of tough, uh, toughness from our offensive players tonight <clears throat> on this field. Uh, and so first down now, ball is on the 49. So that was a good run there by number 28, Garza. And uh, coming back onto the field. So just uh, to remind you all, 14-7. Um, and the Chargers do uh, uh, are behind at this time. First down, here we go. Snap. Handoff. Up the middle. And finally, number 28, Carlos Garza is going to be stopped for, looks like it could be even a short loss. At this time, we see the more traditional run play as the runner is going inside. It looks like it's... A nice read, except that the outside defender for the Harlingen, you know, it, he came a little late. The read was to give it to him, but he reacts quickly and comes in and makes the play. Great job. I couldn't see his number, but a no, nice play by the outside linebacker, defensive end. Second and just over 10 here for the Chargers. Back to that shotgun now. Four wide receivers. He wants to pass left. Here's a pass here from the Chargers to number 10. Connects with gain only about two yards on that play uh, that may be what the first pass of the night and that connects to Joshua Alin Alanis it looks like it is the first pass of the night he does connect on it it looks like it was the right read well done well called play for Chargers except that the defender number eight of Harlingen South that's James Carp Carpio he makes the big play yeah, good play there. Good read by number eight. They're down and eight to go now. Speaking of eight, less than 10 minutes left to go in the second quarter. Chargers down 14-7. Snap. Castillo looks right. 
He's going to take this, decides to run, tucks it. Uh, he's going to gain about four or five yards on the run. He's going to bring up yet another fourth down for the Chargers in the same series. It looked like he did have an, his receiver open a little bit. Uh, it looked like it may have been a dangerous pass as the player wasn't that open. He just decides to call his own number. We've seen him run the ball effectively. He just was not able to get it far enough. And here we see a much farther fourth down, but it is in that zone as the ball is on the 44-yard line. A punt may not net you that many uh, yards giving it away, so we see them come back with the offense once again. And they're going to go to that same formation. So last time was a quarterback keeper. Fourth down, about three to go. Quarterback keeper. He tries to get outside now. Lots of green jerseys, and he's going to be tackled for a loss. This will be a turnover on downs for the Chargers uh, as a South Hawk defense just stuffed him behind the line of scrimmage. Initially, it looked like he might have had the edge. He decides to fake in first and then go on the edge. But the South's defense showed a lot of speed as, as when he finally decided to break around the edge, he was quickly cut off. And then we see number eight, James Again, Garfield, yep. making the, the stop as he quickly comes up. But had he not made the stop, he had many defenders behind him that would have had his back. And Garfield had just made a play on the other side of the field. This time came on this side of the field. So he's going all over the place there. So here we go. The South Hawks will take over at the 47-yard line. Nine minutes left to go in the second quarter. Again, no timeouts. Remember that. They burned them all early on in this game. Here we go. Morton will hand off to Rodriguez. Rodriguez to the right side. Cuts up the middle. Gain about five yards there. Nice running play uh, for Steven Rodriguez. Very quick hitting run right there as we see him come out. They, he is under center. Hits right. Offensive line does a great job as it looked like there were no defenders anywhere until after he had already crossed about four yards past the line of scrimmage. And they're going to call it a second and five. So good game there on the first down. The ball is now in the Charger territory. Again, Holland and South Hawks are up 14 to seven in this ball game. Uh, and they hit, came up with a huge defensive stop on uh, the last series. And now they are trying to roll again. Jimmy Morton in that shotgun now. He has three wide receivers. Will he pass? Yes, he will. Looking downfield. Flush from the pocket, though. Being chased out of the pocket. He's going to tuck it, try to get out of bounds, and he does. Maybe gain of about one yard, but uh, he was trying to go downfield. Just uh, that, that pocket just closed on him, and he had to get out of there. The Chargers are very lucky that the pressure does finally come because right before the pressure finally made him roll out, his receiver got open, would have been wide open deep down the middle, but the pressure coming off the right side forces him to roll out, and he's not able to see right at the right moment. So he, he does make some positive yards. It looked like maybe a uh, small half a yard or maybe a half yard loss basically third in the really same. close right there in that line of scrimmage third down now for the Hawks ball is right on the other side of the 50 here he's going to roll right passes right but this time it's a short pass he likes that little kick out pass to Bobby Castro this time it'll be incomplete fourth down for the Hawks and right there it does look like veterans may did make a small adjustment normally we saw the safety chase him entirely down the field this time it looked like they passed off mm -hmm. who the man-to-man -man coverage was as the Opposite safety just decides to come up and cover him. But either way, bad throw on that one, so we don't get to see uh, the receiver try to take it. And so that's going to bring up a punt here for the Hawks, and the Hawks will punt. Uh, and back to receive for Veterans uh, Memorial looks, uh, looks to us like that's number 11, uh, Derek Rodriguez. Uh, back to return this one, and he's lined up about the 15-yard line. Here we go. Good snap. Punt is up. Nice-looking punt. And he'll return this one starting at the 22, but he's met pretty quickly there by number 21 of the Hawks. That's Javier Olvera. And so the Chargers will take over at the 22-yard line with 7.54 left to go in the first half. And I think a big part of that play was the punt itself. As we see it go in the air, it, it has some decent hang time. So when Rodriguez catches the ball, he thinks he's going to be able to make a play, but there are the defenders right there to get him. Yeah, good punt there by the punter. Uh, good job of the uh, of the recipient of that punt just securing that football. So the Chargers will be able to come out here. Uh, you know, last series they had two fourth downs. One of them they converted, the other one they could not. Uh, and so that was the, the first hint of the night that, that the Chargers were, were not able to keep that ball moving like they did that first uh, at the start of the game. So coming out here, I'm sure they want to get back to that early game form. Shotgun now. Keeper, left side. Castillo bounces outside. But he'll be ankle tackled there, but it looks like number five of the Hawks is Royel Berlanga. Yes, Berlanga yep. is able to escape his blocker. It looks like it's going to be a big gain for the quarterback, but Berlanga meets the pulling guard and hits him right in the mouth. 
and then is able to peel off to make the tackle. Had he not done that, it, would, it may have been very hard for the interior linebacker to catch up to the quarterback and make the play. He may have been able to take it for about 15 yards. And that brings up the concern earlier about the Harlan and South Hawks as some of their key players going both ways as Berlanga. Here we go. Looking to pass this time. Short pass to number 11. I believe that's Rodriguez. Out to the 30. Spins to the inside. Gets to about the 34. He should have the first down. Uh, goes number 11, Derek Rodriguez. Yeah, Rodriguez is able to spin, get the first down. Quick hitting pass play right there is play action. He's, he's actually on the inside part of the offensive line. He almost comes from the backfield, maybe a, a little bit interior slot kind of deal. Uh, but after the play action, he does come open. It didn't look like he was going to be able to get the first down, but he makes a nice play and gets Brownsville the first down. First and 10 now on the 34-yard line. Under seven minutes left to go in this first half. Looking left, wants to pass. Going to let this one go. Connects with receiver number two. That's a first down uh, to number two, Alfonso Vela. First down and then some. Very pretty play right there by the Chargers. As we see him, he makes, he pulls out, gets the throw, and Marcus Castillo gets the throw. He throws it with great timing as we see him throw it right as the receiver's making the break. He's wide open right there for the easy throw. Well, well. Yeah, well we're done. seeing a little bit more passing here from the Chargers here as they really start out just going to the run. First and 10, here we go right on the 49-yard line. Castillo in that shotgun, squatting like a catch. Check that out. Hands it up to number 11. That's Rodriguez now. Uh, he returned one. He's caught one, and now he runs one. Gain of three yards on the outside. Yeah, there we see him. He, they're making that same replay that they did earlier in the game as Rodriguez takes it off the edge. This time they had the outside defenders break off and make the tackle there. Second and six now, 548 and ticking in this first half. The Chargers down 14 to seven. Uh, trying to get another score in before going to the locker room. Here we go. Castillo, three receivers to his right, one to his left now, spreading that field out a little bit. Sends his receiver number 23 in motion. Will hand it off. No, keeps it. Quarterback keeper left, right, up the middle. He's got this one broken. 25, 15, 10, 5. And this will be a huge touchdown for number five, Marcus Castillo on the keeper and he just burned that defense on that one Jonathan yeah I didn't realize that he had that kind of wow. speed we saw him run it in a bruising style earlier this time he he, t he fakes it and it looks like he's going to be met by some defenders it looked like someone was going to get a hand on him but then he basically goes untouched because I don't think people realized the speed that he was going to run through the middle with. Wow, we talked about the speed of number 28, Carlos Garza, earlier. And let me tell you that number five, Marcus Castillo, exhibits the same speed. So he broke a huge 50-yard run on that one, uh, bringing it 14-13 now, awaiting the extra point. And it's up, almost blocked. And it is good, though. So 14-14, the Chargers tie it up now with five minutes, 24 seconds left to go in that first half. And big run earlier by, by uh, Garza. Uh, now a big run by Castillo. And the Chargers like to charge, man. They like to run that football. So we have a great game on our hands here, folks, here at Bogus Stadium this Friday night. Beautiful night of football. We have a tie ball game now, 14-14. I mean, this may be just who outlasts the other one, Jonathan. Yeah, we've seen both these offenses just come out. We've seen them each score on two drives, and then they've each been stopped on only one drive. So, so far, we've seen quite a bit of offense of execution throughout the night. I just still can't believe that that quarterback just ran right down the middle untouched. It looked yeah. like there were free defenders there, but somehow he was able to get right by all of them untouched and just takes it for the big game. And then we see his separation as there were people chasing him, but it, he just got farther and farther away from them, runs it in for the touchdown. Big play for the Chargers. And I think what he really did well on that play was he followed his blockers very well. I think number 75 was, uh, was out there, Gage Rivas, uh, and he kind of just went behind him, and then he cut right. He had one more blocker, uh, could have been a fullback. Yeah, I couldn't tell that blocked was blocking a linebacker downfield, and then that just sprung him, and he was gone. And once he, he got past the uh, the line of sight of those safeties, there was no catching him. Here we go, kickoff now. This will be returned. Caught at the four, brought out to the 50 now. Trying to get away, and he's going to stay right around the 15. Had a chance to get a field with Ale Garza, uh, but he's tackled shortly there, and... Uh, That'll put them down about the 15-yard line. And we see a big play by number 42, Alejandro Guevara, as he, as the receiver tries to take it off the edge. He looks like he has a lot of open room, 
and he ha just has to make an open field break a tackle, but Guevara does not let him escape and makes the stop, keeping them inside of the 20. So they have 5 minutes, 17 seconds. They have no timeouts, right, Aaron. Right. So even though it looks like there's a lot of time on the clock, they are not able to stop it, and they will have to do a long drive if they want to score a touchdown here. 5 and 17 left to go in this first half, 14-14. And the Hawks go to work at the 16-yard line pitch. Rodriguez left, and then comes. Oh, it's ball. It's a fumble, and it goes right into the hands of a Charger defender. There's not going to be any disputing that. That's Charger football right at the 16-yard line. Pops right in his hands, Jonathan. Yeah, as he is hit. It's a quick pitch. We see Morton come again off, uh, blocking up. As soon as he's hit, the ball flies up in the air. It hits one of the Charger defenders first and bounces off of him, goes up into the air again, right into the hands of who, Aaron? Number 15, Victor Aguilar. I mean, right into his hands. It, it, like you said, it went off another defender. I think it was number, was that number 21? I believe 21. Uh, right, yes. Morgan Borland. And he almost caught that fumble, and then it goes into uh, the hands uh, uh, of the other defender and just able to, to bring that down. So we do have a Charger on the field right now who was injured in that on that play. On that last play right there, looked like the defense just had a nice punch. It was really before he had been wrapped up. The ball just kind of popped out. Uh, so it was a defender coming from the side, it looked like, and just got the punch in. And the ball just went whoop out of his hands. It was just a perfect pass into the defender's hands there uh, as he was able to recover that one. And, uh, and the charter player is up uh, and walking off the field. There was just a little bit of help, so I uh, hope he's doing okay. Uh, and so play will progress here now. And a big turn of events here for both teams as the Chargers have come up with a huge turnover. And now they have the ball here in the 16-yard line. They have two timeouts left. It's 14-14, and they still have five minutes and 11 on the clock here. So uh, Chargers just well in command, well in control to be able to punch w at least one more in here uh, before going to that locker room. And I think if I'm the Chargers, I attack South with strong run play right here. Take away the time from South. As you know, they're not going to be able to stop the clock with timeouts. So I'd use up some of that valuable time right here. You know, if you get the touchdown, great, but I would take time off right here and make sure you get the last possession of the half and you know you're going to get the ball back in the second half. Well, we have a new quarterback in for the Chargers. This is number 12, Dave, David Cantu. Uh, Cantu hands out to 11 right up the middle. Nobody's going to touch number 11. That's Derek Rodriguez for a touchdown, another Charger touchdown. The handoff of the new quarterback to number 11, Derek Rodriguez, has been very active tonight. Big touchdown. Well, so far tonight we see it does not matter who the quarterback right. is as they have such great, strong running game. He was untouched right there on that. So Nobody you know touched. that means that the offensive line did an excellent job of blocking. The fake was well executed as we've seen the both quarterbacks kind of hold it in for a little while. But once he got it, he took off. We saw both. We saw a guard pulling, makes a nice block, giving him the, the seal and the hole. And he just runs right up the middle, making the big play. Extra point now, good snap. Kick is up, and it is good. So 20 and 14, just like that. Fumble, they recovered on the 16, and punch it in right away for another Charger touchdown. Like you said here, I mean, we've seen, what, three, four guys run the, run the football, whether it be quarterbacks or running backs or wide receiver, and uh, it seems like they've been able to do it efficiently. So you have to go back to what's the foundation of, of being able to run that well consistently. Our offensive line is doing some work down there. Yeah, if you know you're able to plug in any running back and right. be effective, you know that means the offensive line and the schemes that the coaches are putting in are effective. And we've seen two runners in a row go untouched right down the middle. So you know, both that means that this, these offensive line guys are keeping their bodies on these defenders. No one's able to reach over and grab anybody. It's amazing. So this Charger offense has, has been able to just do this on the ground. We saw uh, the series before, a little bit of passing start to, to come up there, um, but quickly they just returned back to what they were doing best early in the game. That was run the football, and here we go. Now it's 21-14 with five minutes, six seconds left to go in that first half, and the Harlan and South Hawks will be back to return this one, hoping to make something uh, now, they did not do any clock management there, Jonathan. They just punched it in for the touchdown. So they will have a five, about five minutes left. Here we go. The kick is up. And it will be returned out to the 10 now. The 15, quick move to the inside, but it's going to fall short about the 19-yard line. Goes number 11, Darren Bettis. So five minutes to make something happen. No timeouts. And we see two great special teams played by number 42. I believe it was his name is Gavar. Number 42, yes, Alejandro Guevara. He makes two 
kickoff tackles in a row, one in the open field. Now, as he's being blocked, he's able to gr grab the feet of the runner for Harlan South. And I believe Guevara, number 42, is uh, their middle linebacker. So, you know, he's all over the place tonight. He, he's he's a, a good sure tackler there for the Chargers. First and 10 now. Morton hands it off to his fullback. Fullback inside, tackled quickly by number 21 of the Chargers, Morgan Borland. About a two-yard gain. Yeah, Morgan, I believe, is the safety playing, but he does on this when Harlan South has lined up in their big offense, these safeties are lined up like if they're linebackers. And so he is not coming up from way deep. He is He's standing almost on the line of scrimmage and makes the play like an outside linebacker. You talked about it, and, you, and again, this points to it, these safeties are coming up a lot. I mean, when is it uh, uh, worth the risk to try to go downfield and, and make a big shot, you know? Let Jim Morton let it fly. Let's see if uh, that comes up here. Second and seven, ball on the 23. 4.20 left to go in the first half. Jim Morton is rolling right. He is looking to pass downfield, but looks for a short pass, connects, and the receiver will have enough for the first down there on the outside. And right there, I couldn't tell if it was a man-to-man -man coverage as we've seen all night. It looked like it may have been a zone as the outside defender does run deep back yep. and just allows the receiver to stay open on the inside. He didn't react to the receiver. He just kept on running. Yeah. Uh, so it looked like they may have finally changed the zone, but Morton so does a good one. job of attacking that zone. Yeah, basically they're, they're just putting – that one, they just have one safety deep, you know, and so they're not really afraid of the deep ball right now. I mean, they're, they're – right here, no safety deep. They're playing like linebackers. So uh, here we go. Four wide receivers. Morton going to run this one, tries to find space, nowhere to go. He just kind of tucks it and goes down. That's going to that's gonna be about a loss of three yards on that play. Yeah, every time that we've seen – Harden South come out in this formation. We've seen the same exact look by the defense, and they decide to run it. But I would think that they would have the opportunity to, like you said, throw deep as the interior coverage guy is. He's just facing strictly to the receiver outside. So I think you can attack him, maybe give the, in, the outside receiver just hit out real quick, and then just allow the inside guy to go one on one yeah, deep. Go deep. One safety again. Here we go, Morton. Second and 12 now. Ball on the 30. 330 left in this first half. Screen now. Dumps it off to his receiver, but uh, the defense just read that really well, and they just followed to the football. That's, an, that's another loss of about two yards right there. But again, as we, you said, the screen was read really well. Not very many passes have gone vertically. They've all right. been side passes or horizontal passes. And so they've, we've, they've allowed the receivers to make big plays after the catch, but we haven't seen the ball being thrown deep in the air. So these, it looks like the defense has adjusted. They say, we know if the ball is being thrown, we just have to run sideways and we don't exactly. have to run backwards at all. Yeah, that's right. They're just breaking down and going lateral, uh, and they're able to, to kind of keep everything in front of them. So third and 14 now, ball in the 28, 245 left to go. And they're in a tight formation. Jim Warren play action, rolling right, looking downfield. They look well covered, though. And it's an interception. Interception by the Chargers right about the 39-yard line. Looking downfield, Jonathan, they look really well covered. They did have great coverage downfield. And then number 64 of the defense, he keeps pressure. He keeps kind of a contain. I think we've seen Morton make a lot of his big plays rolling out. And so I think the defense was ready for it. He doesn't try to rush in at all. He just kind of keeps the outside edge, and he puts the pressure on Morton. He couldn't hold it and wait to see if something developed as no one was open initially, and he had to make a decision at that point. Yeah, definitely trying to make something happen there, but, you know, just I, I, I could see just looking downfield that those white jerseys on every single green jersey downfield, they only had a couple of receivers running because it was tight formation too. So uh, Chargers definitely in the advantage. So first and 10 now for the Chargers, ball in the 39, two timeouts left, and 2.37 left to go in this first half. I'm sure they're going to try to punch one in. Castillo back now at the helm. Keeper by Castillo, inside, outside. Going to gain about nine yards in that run there. He's back on the field, and uh, he's running strong still. And he does run strong down the middle. I do want to point out that number 11, we saw him run the ball a few times earlier for them. But Derek Rodriguez, he faked really hard yeah, going outside. So I think you see that you have to respect that run to the edge because he's running so hard. And we've seen them break it earlier so a few times going outside on the edge. So, Yeah, when you're running that well with that many players, you like you said, you have to respect every single option. And, and so, you know, what, what that does is it freezes that defender. 
if they're spying them or maybe they're not. I don't know. I, I can't tell yet. But I, I'm, I'm interested to see if, if say, a linebacker spying number 11 and then middle linebacker spying the quarterback and the safety spying, you know, the fullback or something, whatever the case may be, it freezes them because they've got to make sure they don't have the football, which does not allow them to flow over to get that tackle. And, and so just having a few different options at, running, at the running game, it, it really puts the defense in a tough predicament. Yeah, and then you see they, they're having to, to guard every single option right. and really stick in place to their assignment. Instead of being able to go and help, they're stuck to their assignment, and then they're getting rolled over by these big offensive linemen afterwards. And it's really hard to be aggressive. It's very, you, you really can't run a blitz out of this because if you run a blitz and, and they go outside and you run an inside blitz, they're burning it. So, you know, the, the Chargers offense is just really well put together as far as having some very strong runners uh, and a few different options here. So second down and, and two now. Just over two minutes left to go in the first half. Castillo is the man in the shotgun waiting the snap. He will hand it off. Here's God at 28 to the outside. He can run. But this time, big tackle here for the Harlem South Hawks. Uh, trying to get a number on that outside tackler there. But he did good. He, now, he stayed on his assignment, and he got that one. Well, here we see on the replay, he just plays aggressive as he he's able to just escape the block of the offensive lineman on that one. The left tackle did not do a good job of maintaining the block. Right. He t hits him initially, makes him take one step back, but then is not he does not stay engaged, and he just chases down the runner. Yeah, that's number 53, Ade Awa, and uh, just does a really good job getting off that block, getting contained. Good job there by the defensive end. Here we go, third down and four to go now. The Hawks would like a stop, and they do get one here. Big tackle again in the backfield this time. Uh, I believe that's number eight uh, for the Hawks, James Carpio. Okay, here we see Carpio. He just dives underneath, and I guess the offensive line, they thought he had taken himself out of the play because he right. dove down. The offensive lineman was thought, well, let me go block the linebacker and give us a big play. Uh, but he is able to make an athletic play as he dives to his feet but then gets back up and makes the tackle. Well done right there. Yeah, great job there uh, by that defender. They're playing the defensive tackle position. Here we go, fourth down, fourth to go. Chargers keeps it past. Oh, an incomplete pass to Rodriguez. So big stop here by uh, the, the Hawks here, um, preventing a possible other score. So the game's still 21-14. It's just a one-score game. The defense coming up huge on that series. It looked like the Chargers were going to have a chance and most likely make a first down there as he had a ton of space in front of him. Unfortunately, he does not make the catch. It looked like the ball was thrown pretty decent. It's just uh, a little behind but not able to make the catch. You know, He's thinking he's aggressively. He needs to catch it and make a right. big play. And I think he just got a little ahead of himself there. Hey, 43 seconds left to go, John. What do you think? You just take care of the football here, go to halftime? Uh, we've seen them turn the ball twice in a right. row. I wouldn't blame the coach if he decides to... Just do an easy run and see what happens. Um, we'll find out here. First down, here we go. Jimmy Morton under center. And he will hand it off to Rodriguez. Rodriguez busts up the middle. Yards to run. 40-45. There will be a first down. So the clock will stop as they get the chains reset. But again, no timeouts here for the Hawks. 36 seconds on the clock. It will be again first down. The clock does stop. Uh, I think at this point you may want to just see quickly see what could happen yeah. now since you already have it at midfield. Uh, looks like the runner forces the opportunity, but the clock does begin to roll now as they do take a bit of time in the huddle. Too long in the huddle. Here you go. Jimmy Morton under center. Ball at the 45, and he's going to fake handoff. He's going downfield. Same play was intercepted last time. He releases this one. Big catch downfield. I believe that's his tight end. Big number five, Royal Berlanga, and it is. He's down at the 31-yard line, but 11 seconds left. They've got to get this ball quick. I mentioned earlier that the defensive end kept contained this time. He looks at the runner. He gets fooled, and Morn has all the time to throw. His tight end finally breaks free. He does stop the clock by throwing it into the ground, and we see with eight seconds left, they are at about the 32-yard line. And they say often stay on the field, it looks like. Uh, are they bringing out the kicking unit here? Can't, can't really tell. I know a couple new personnel have come on. No, it, it looks like they're going to go uh, try to go downfield maybe. The ball is at the 32, so this were to be a field goal, be a 49-yard field goal. Really long field goal. Yeah. We see Morn out there. He does have the group in a huddle. Close. The offense will be coming out and trying to make a play happen right here. Now uh, we may get to see him throw deep right here, just out of necessity. Right. Exactly. And, and there's not a whole lot that can go wrong. Also, so eight seconds left to go. Hawks down 21-14. No timeouts here. So Morn's going to go. Four wide receivers. He wants to go downfield. He needs to go downfield. Let's it go. He's got a receiver open in the end zone. 
in and out of the hands of number two, Jason Martinez. That hit him. Incomplete pass. Yeah, it looked like he had his receiver wide open, uh, but he does. The, res the player on defense is able to gain some ground at the very end. I think he, he got his hand on it just a little bit, making it flutter right at the end. Almost a great, perfect pass by Morton. Unfortunately for him, it does not connect. It would have been an easy reception uh, had it not been just tipped at the last second. I mean, he hit the shoulder pad of that receiver. That, that was a catchable football. Here we go. He is left with .6 on the clock here. So they get one more shot downfield. And he's going to let this one fly. Looking right, left, right again. Let's it go. Charger defending the area. Receiver looked like he had tripped out of bounds or something. So that would be the end of the first half. Takes two big shots downfield. One of them could have been a touchdown easily. Uh, the second one just not, not even close to being catchable. So, you know what? What an exciting first half here that we've had here at Bogus Field. It, it looked just like when the Chargers were.